Ještě počkáme tak dvě minuty. Tak to přijde jako fajk, ale samozřejmě můj názor je zcela irrelevantní. Je prostě je potřeba tady něco mačkat, nebo... Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you at the Dev Assistant Workshop. First question. Is there someone who doesn't understand Czech? Yes. Okay, very well. So, English it is. Now, uh, this is a workshop. That means we should do things. However, I don't know what your, say, knowledge of Dev Assistant is. So, um, let's do a poll. How many of you do know what Dev Assistant is at all? Okay. That's uh, three, four, okay, five. <laughs> okay, so let's make this uh, in a presentation mode. Oh, sorry. Uh, my name is uh, Tomáš Hradě. Uh, I work in uh, I work at Red Hat, and I am a Dev Assistant developer, one of them. Uh, if you want to uh, look up stuff that I do, uh, it's on GitHub under the nickname you can see on the on the screen. Now, let's talk about what Dev Assistant is. When you want to start developing project, program, you want to write documentation, you usually need some things. You need a text editor, you need probably some libraries, if you're writing documentation, maybe you need uh, something to convert, uh, convert source code into, say, HTML. Uh, and you probably need to do many more things that are not necessarily just coding. So, this is where Dev Assistant comes in. Uh, Dev Assistant is aimed at doing all these things you would otherwise have to do manually. Uh, that means that right now, if you want to start doing some of these things I just mentioned, you need to go to the internet, to Stack Overflow somewhere, somewhere else, copy tutorials line by line. It usually doesn't work, so you need to go to Stack Overflow again, and then you need to fix your problem. And maybe after three hours, you've you will finally uh, start doing something that you actually want. So, uh, with Dev Assistant, if somebody has done this before, they might have written an assistant, which, so to speak, is a plugin, uh, that does precisely this. So, you just launch Dev Assistant, click prepare this kind of documentation, and it does that for you in one click or uh, as you will see, uh, just one or two comments in the comment line. Uh, speaking of programming strictly, uh, you mostly need dependencies. Those are provided by different man uh, dependency managers. Uh, in Fedora, 
it's uh, YAM or DNF or RPM itself. Uh, on uh, Arch, uh, Arch Linux, say, it's uh, Pac-Man. Uh, for you, as the developer, not to have to care about all these things, uh, the assistant can run on multiple platforms and always resolve the right dependencies to what you actually need. So that's one more thing you actually don't have to do. And of course, if you, for example, prepare a web presentation, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a website or a web application, uh, you probably need a web server running on localhost where you actually can try stuff. That means that you need this web server installed and maybe you need, uh, you need ports allowed in uh, IP tables or, so, or just generally in a firewall. Dev assistant can do that too. But in that case, it's possible uh, that uh, the, the particular assistant won't work on this platform perfectly, so uh, the, de uh, the developer may restrict what platforms it actually runs on so that it doesn't you know, do crazy things and wreak havoc on your, on your hard drive and destroy everything you ever loved. Now, the assistant, that is the plugin. Uh, what that is, that is uh, pretty much a recipe. You can understand it as a shell script, pretty much, uh, with some more metadata to it. When I say shell script, I actually mean YAML, which is a markup language. <laughs> but we can do shell calls, so you can pretty much make it look like a shell script. Uh, and things like arguments, which you can which you can specify declaratively. So you just say what arguments you want, what they should look like, and everything is translated properly and works automatically. Uh, and for example, some more source files. Uh, and uh, there's something I'm forgetting. Yeah, the dependencies. Yeah. So for every platform you run the assistant on, you can specify the dependencies and everything you know, regarding the actual installation will be done by the assistant itself. There are four types of assistants for four general use cases. When you want to create a project from scratch that mostly installs the dependencies you need. There's a tweaking one, which means uh, that if you already have, uh, have an existing project and you want, say, add a class, compile it to something. Uh, so if you, want to, uh, if you want to do that, there's the tweaking uh, assistant kind of type. There is a prepare uh, assistant. That, uh, that one does the preparation of particular, uh, say, projects or programs itself. So if you want to develop, say, um, not GitHub because that's not open source. GitLab. If you want, uh, if you want uh, to uh, develop the GitLab, the application itself, uh, you need particular dependencies. You need particular settings. You need the source code. Uh, so, if the GitLab developers wanted to make it easy for you to contribute to their code, they would create an assistant. Uh, for, their, for their source code and you, you could easily with one click just check it all out, set it all up and just start coding. Uh, that is the eternal question. Why? Mostly if I say uh, the things that I just uh, said to you to other people, uh, the question is why can't I just use my IDE? Well, the answer is yes, you can. But uh, the problem is, if you want to use an IDE, you need to have that IDE, and you can't really you know, do anything about it. So if I like to develop, or uh, develop in NetBeans, uh, and there is a plugin for Eclipse, then I'm pretty much screwed, because I can't really do anything about it. I need to install Eclipse, like a gigabyte of dependencies, just for that particular thing. Dev Assistant is really tiny. I think the source code is like 600 kilobytes. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and works everywhere, pretty much. 
We have users on Fedora, we have users on Arch, we have users on Mac OS. Uh, not on Windows, though. Uh, so, uh, it doesn't matter what IDE you use, it doesn't matter if you, I don't know, type machine code into standard output, uh, input, you can always use Dev Assistant. And, of course, you can use it even if the task you want to actually do is not programming related. Uh, I'm right now working on a documentation assistant that installs things like Pandoc and MD uh, for Markdown and uh, helps you easily convert whole documentation stacks from, say, Markdown or restructured text into HTML or whatever, whatever you want. And you don't really have an IDE for that now, do you? So, I would like to ask you what you want to do today. We can have, well, several things and you can surely add more. Uh, one idea that I had is to actually write an assistant for Fedora RPM packages, but that sort of expects that you've done this before. Uh, another idea is that we, that I just, you know, run Dev Assistant and create some projects with it. You can ask questions, find bugs, which you definitely will. And, <laughs> uh, and generally we can just, you know, talk about what's possible and, you know, have, a, have pretty much a dialogue. And uh, the third one is that we'll just go home. So, I want to hear suggestions. Come on, people. Please, give me something. Yes? I'm sorry? Well, there's the thing with... Deb Well, uh, the thing with, with the Debian is that we don't, we don't yet have uh, support for uh, aptitude in general, so you can't really run it right now, but if you code in Python, okay, never mind. <laughs> we could definitely, we, we could definitely, sorry? Yeah, so, uh, <coughs> anything else? Okay, let's just do a demo. So, Dev Assistant can be run two ways currently, from a command line and from a GUI. The thing is, the GUI guy that we had that, you know, developed the stuff sort of can't do that anymore. So uh, while we have done a lot of work in the back end and in the common line, the GUI doesn't really represent it all that well at the current moment, so I'll stick most of the time to the common line, if you will. But to see at least how, uh, how the GUI looks is this. If you're on Dev Assistant, you get this window. Uh, I don't have all the assistants installed and this is just, you know, a few of them. Uh, currently I think there's about 20 of them working. Uh, let's say I want to develop a package for Dev Assistant. That means the assistant that I was talking about, I want to make it easy for someone to contribute to my code. So I just would click uh, that I want to create the Dev Assistant package. And sorry, this screen is really tiny, so I can't really show the whole window. Uh, I can put the name in it, which uh, automatically creates the correct project directory and specify lots of options that this assistant gives me. 
Uh, so we are talking about the four types of assistants. So I want to create the creating assistant. I want to specify my name. Yeah, this is a bug. And I want to set uh, the home page to example.com. Now, I click run. I want to create the directory. And this is the actual run of the assistant. So uh, now, what now happened is that the dev assistant created uh, a file structure for me that's necessary to package the assistant and filled in the things that I told it to. You can generally do these things with all the projects that are currently you know, supported by dev assistant. If you want to see the debug logs, there's a lot of things happening. And if we want to look at... What happened here? I've got the files. I've got all the directories I need. I've got the license file waiting for me to fill in the license. And... Uh, generally, I would have to do all these things myself if I wasn't using Dev Assistant. These are not hard things. They are just boring and annoying and I have to do them and again and again and again. So that's what actually we want to achieve. We don't want to cure cancer. Well, of course I want to cure cancer, but I don't have the skills. Uh, we just want to automate all these annoying things. And if you wanted to run something in the command line, oh, if we want to run the exact same thing in the command line, we would do it as such. DA create, um, what do we have here? Yeah, we have got bash completion, so you just double press, press the tab key and you can see what you can actually do in each step. So I will create a DAP, which is the Dev Assistant package. And here are the options. So author, that's me. Um, name, that's my project command line. And uh, home page is example.com. Oh. oh, and I forgot that I wanted to create the creator assistant. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's really careful not to, you know, delete the files, so you need to do, delete the cells. Yeah, so now you can see the exact same output as you did in the GUI. That's because both the command line interface and the GUI are just, you know, different views of the same things inside. Uh, and you can see my project command line looking exactly the same. If I edit the meta file, you can uh, see that I was filled in as the author. Now. Oh. Are there any questions so far? You guys are extremely bright. Uh, so yeah, one uh, there is a there is a nice example I think of why Dev Assistant is really useful in some cases, and that is the very presentation uh, that I showed you. Oh, sorry. This is, this is a presentation running on, on the local host uh, powered by uh, the, the JavaScript project uh, Reveal.js that's generally for, uh, for creating presentations. You generally just you know, create an HTML file with, this, uh, with some JavaScript in it and you get this beautiful animated 
uh, presentation, there's really a lot of stuff you can do with it. But there's quite a lot of things that need to be done before you can run this presentation. I created this presentation. Why is this? Yeah. Uh, if you look at it, and that's. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of files. The index. Sorry. Yeah, the index file is really, really huge. Uh, given that you would have to, you know, create it uh, every time yourself, or just, you know, um, change the version that you downloaded from the internet. And I, moreover, use Markdown to specify the slides. For this, you need a web server. So all these things are necessary just to run that presentation. Yeah. This is, by the way, really clever. I suggest you uh, check out uh, Reveal.js. It's the best thing out of SlideBread. Uh, so I needed to, uh, to, I would need to do all this. I don't have time for that. So with Dev Assistant, I would run uh, Dev Assistant, create reveal.js and I want the full setup which means as you can, oh, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, if I want to create a reveal.js presentation, I have these options with documentation. These, this was all automatically generated from the assistant file that I created for Reveal.js. So I want to create a presentation named Presentation 2. I want full setup because I want the uh, web server and Markdown support and I want the Markdown edited index file. So let's do that. Now it downloads uh, dependencies uh, through npm. They are stored in the local directory so they don't interfere with my system dependencies. And now I can start editing. As it says, I can find that in presentation 2 you, you can see the index. Yep, is the one we saw previously. And the markdown file is ready for me to start editing. And I did all that in one click. I'm not going to run the web server now because I've already got the other presentation running, so that will be kind of a mess. But I think that generally this could give you uh, the idea why you would want to try Dev Assistant at all. Right now, if you want to this. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to uh, develop one of uh, with one, one of these things, oh wait, this is not the. I did it wrong. Yes, search. Yeah. Um, come on, talk to me. Now, if you want to develop a thing, it doesn't work very well. If you want to, de to develop something in a programming language, you want, to, uh, you want to create an Android application, a colleague of mine created an assistant not, uh, not long, long ago for that, you can find those uh, at the package index. Like, for example, with Python or Ruby or generally any language, uh, libraries are mostly uh, distributed via a standardized channel. So no matter if you run on Linux, if you run on, well, Fedora, if you run on Debian, well, Debian is a bad example, sorry, <laughs> Arch Linux, 
or uh, macOS, you can always get these assistants if they are of course supported on your platform. So you choose one, for example the uh, Ruby by Slavek, uh, that's the guy in yellow sitting in the red mouse throat. And uh, you, can, uh, you can see what this assistant does, this is the uh, description. You can see some metadata and you can also, and that's a new feature, sorry? Uh, just a note for the record, uh, I think that currently we have a bug on macOS that we haven't yet fixed. So yeah, we have a couple of, couple yeah, of yeah. bugs on macOS, but... Right, like, I mean, in the version that actually works with this whole CD API thing, I think the previous version, the 0 0.9 doesn't have the bug yet. So, yeah, we, we're like Fedora developers, we don't really and some and stuff, so we haven't yet fixed it, but yeah. we'll fix it in time. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you can check this out, and if you want to install it, there's nothing easier than running Dev Assistant Package Install Ruby. Now, nothing should probably happen because, yeah, I've already got it installed, but if I didn't, it would uh, download uh, the package and it would uh, download also all the dependencies uh, because yes, you can, uh, you can have dependencies between assistants and you could uh, easily start uh, coding uh, right away with, for example, create, Ruby and what can we do? We can do Rails, so Ruby, Rails, what can we do with this? We can specify the name, of course, we can, uh, we can add configuration for Vim. Uh, we, are in, we are actually thinking about how to add support to other editors as well. This is kind of a proof of concept. And, and this is a very sexy thing, you can upload it to GitHub. But not like, you know, you create a repo and you check it out, copy it there and upload it yourself. No, you can do that with Dev Assistant alone. So uh, if I wanted to do that, I would run this name devconf ruby and github. Oh my, I don't have the dependencies. Okay, this is going to take a while. Uh, so, do you now have any questions? Yes, please. Uh, is there a conference on it for Fedora 20? Well, Fedora 20 is kind of a tough one. We do have uh, a copper repository. Uh, that's, uh, that's a repository of packages that are not in the mainline Fedora, but you can run them. That is, well, proven to work on Fedora 21. I'm not sure if it works on Fedora 20. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't, but I can't really guarantee anything. So if you go to, and uh, you can note it down. Sorry, tiny screen. Uh, it's a copper. Damn, damn me! I've got the wrong Firefox. Copper Fedora project. Yeah. So that's copper dot fedora project dot org uh, slash copper slash my name slash dev assistant. You've got the repository. Uh, there you find. There you can find. Uh, Dev Assistant packaged with all the dApps, or pretty much all the dApps that are uh, present at the package index. You can see it here. Yeah. So the things starting with DAP, those are uh, the assistants, the packages. And there is Dev Assistant, yeah, hidden here somewhere. Yeah. There's, the, there's the version uh, 0 0.10.1, which has pretty much all the functionality that uh, we've seen here. 
the thing is that the newer version uh, 0103 is available in rawhide so if you want if you want the latest and greatest it, it is currently in rawhide or you can of course uh, download it from uh, the Python package index do you guys know pip okay who doesn't okay uh, PIP is uh, a Python package uh, manager, pretty much, uh, that works well, mostly everywhere. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to, I mean, even, even with Debian, you can download Dev Assistant, it will most likely work as it should. The thing is that no assistants that we have right here are able to support uh, Aptitude. So you can't install any dependencies, but if you're fine with that, you can run it right away. Yeah, so we need to, we actually need, uh, need someone with, uh, with the skills and uh, the time. Yes? Oh, it's definitely not hard. We just need, you know, so some... Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um, like you said, if you want to develop for, for GitLab and you want to make it easier, you uh -huh. will create a package. So, um, like at the end of the day, would there be like dozens of, of those assistant packages for each application? Yes, okay. I will. Um, sorry, can you repeat? Can you rephrase the very last portion of the question? Um, the, the question specifically is: I have an existing project, uh -huh. and I want to build a package for it. Uh -huh. A system package. Like, do I have at the end a repository or some file space where all the files of the application will plus the files, or is it independent of that? Well. Um, you can do it either or generally. Uh, I think it is safe to put, for example, if you want to create the, uh, if you, for example, want to create this, uh, the presentation that I just showed, it's good to have the source bundled in the Dev Assistant package. You can do that. That's perfectly okay. That's uh, uh, that's what. Yeah, sorry, this is okay. Uh, that's what you. That's what you should do. Uh, but you can, of course, ask the uh, ask the assistant to check out the newest sources. That is perfectly possible as well. Uh, but you are sort of risking that the steps you the assistant does after you know installing all the dependencies, putting files there, they might fail because you know the, the sources of the original project have changed. So that's kind of kind of a risk, but it's you know it's. Yes. Yeah, and they can man they can maintain them. Yes, it's it's just you know some additional work. Yeah. You know, everything always is, uh, but uh, the thing is that if you as the developer do this little extra work you make it much easier for everybody else to for example submit patches I mean I wanted to submit a patch in what was that I don't know there was a there was I don't know some some sort of a Fedora specific package uh, so I first I needed to fi find out fi find out what the URL is then you know I needed to find where the sources are, check them all out. I just wanted to run tests. Nope, not gonna happen. So I needed to find out what the what actually the test dependencies were. And you know when I was three quarters an hour into installing the damn thing, I would just say no, I'm not gonna do that. 
and I just didn't file the patch even though I wanted to because it was trivial. It was really the simplest bug in the world and I didn't file a patch because I just couldn't be bothered. And this is, the, this is a situation where we said we're going to make this and we think we can convince developers that this little work they need to put into you know, maintaining an assistant package for, the, for their own project that, it's going, that you know, it will pay off in the work other people will suddenly be willing to do for them. So yes, you can, you can very well do that. And this is probably stuck on the internet side, so... Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a problem between a keyboard and the chair. So uh, now it installs the dependencies and other stuff happens then. Uh, so, yeah, any more questions before this finishes? Yes, please. The difference. Well, uh, we. Yeah, sorry. Uh, the question is, uh, what the difference is between the version 0 0.9 and 0 0.10? Mostly, I mean, that's that's where the greatest difference uh, uh, differences are. Uh, the 0. Point, uh, I mean, 0 0.9 point two or three. Those, those are mostly bug fixes. And uh, ten one, ten two, and ten three are uh, are again mostly the same. But uh, it's the version zero point ten point zero where we actually edit uh, the capability to download DApps, the assistant packages, from the internet. Yeah, you could extend it before if you you know put files in your you know, home slash dot dev assistant folder. But that's not really what we are going for, right? It's not easy. Uh, so in 0 0.10, we added this functionality. We added uh, the gen generally the packaging system of the, you know, dot DAP files. And uh, Slavik, is there something I'm, I'm missing in between the 9 and 10? Ping pong. Uh, we, we actually added this ping-pong protocol, if you will, uh, to accommodate the greatest complaint against Dev Assistant ever, and that is the YAML, uh, the YAML uh, markup language. Uh, because, well, it's been used uh, to great success in system, in system orchestration since 1998, I think. Uh, so we kind of thought that it would be good to, you know, carry on the legacy because we, we think that's, uh, that's kind of a sensible language uh, to do these things in. However, most developers kind of disagreed. I, I probably, you know, I probably yeah. wouldn't say most, I would say like 40%. Oh, okay, a lot. Yeah, so. And we don't want to lose either of them, so we're now basically supporting both. Yeah. So.
so uh, generally we, we we just didn't want to lose a huge part of our, our audience, and those are mostly you know the advanced developers who just don't want to write you know anything else than their mother language. So to placate them, we added uh, we added this, but. Uh, later in uh, in this workshop, I will show you how a YAML file looks, and it will be up to you to uh, you know get the impression. So back to the Ruby assistant. Now, a lot of things happened. Lots of files were created. Yeah, this is where we started. And. What happened here is that there is a new repository of the specified name on GitHub and since we do have the internet access, I can show you it was indeed created. So I ran just one command, I've got all the Ruby things that I need.